All right, uh, I'm going to introduce this video, and I'm going to start introducing the video so that you get an idea of what the content is. This content is going to be for Regitrays. Regitrays are something that I provide doctors when I get things like incomplete impressions because they use a stock tray to begin with. And that would be things like hamular uh, compressions or not even existing hamular areas, a compression of soft tissue where you can see that it's bottomed out on the bottom of the tray. Things like that that you know are going to create a situation at the end of the case and you may even end up having to reline it. So what I'm offering here is a way to provide an option for the doctor, save him an appointment sequence, um, and uh, also give you an option to provide uh, on cases where doctors are asking for an accelerated time frame. In other words, they want to move the case along and you can take care of two appointments with one by providing the Regitray and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. If you like what I've been doing online here on my YouTube channel, please subscribe. Uh, subscribers tell me that people are interested. Uh, also a like helps as well or a not a like because if I know what you don't want like or if I do uh, find out what you do like or don't like then I can cater to that uh, if I'm showing content people are interested in then I'll know that by the indication of a like or a no like so with that being said we'll move right along I'm gonna move into the registry construction I might break it down into two parts so be aware that I might offer two parts on this it's uh, rather lengthy as far as the step-by-step -step description and uh, I don't want to bog you down with, you know, too long a segment. They're much more digestible when they're broken down um, in 20, 15 to 20 minute segments. If I have to run over 20, I might just cut one short at 15 and then run 15 more. But the point is that there probably will end up being at least two segments on this. Again, this is about registrays, and uh, we'll go from there. So I have to make a spacer uh, for the uh, regit tray that I'm going to make, which is a registration tray. And so I vacuum formed 060 um, polystyrene over the model. And uh, 060 is about one and a half millimeters. And after um, forming, it's one millimeter. So I put a one millimeter spacer on the registry, which means we're going to be taking a registration and a new bite registration, or I should say a new impression at the same time. So here's the sheet, and then I use a Robinson brush stiff, and what I do is, at slow speed, I will cut around the line angle, basically, of where the land area and the wall of the model exist. And I'll go around and I'll slow speed and I'll cut through. And I want to save myself the mess of getting it all over my lens. And so basically, I've already done that. And you get this nice cutout. Here's my spacer. And generally, there you go. Usually pull it from the back works best. And as you can see, I have all of my model markings and uh, where all the attachments are and I will be able to relieve those now on this to give myself an adequate spacer. I will show you that in the middle in a minute. Okay so as I showed you earlier um, I had to be able to make a spacer and then um, I had to uh, cut it out, which I did with the Robinson brush as I showed you earlier. And then uh, once I've done that, I have to identify the borders because a spacer is going to be short of the lower part of the vestibular area because you want to capture that vestibular area with impression material. So the next thing that I do is I take a pencil on the outside and I basically outline where that's going to go, which pretty much coincides with the markings that I have on this model. All right, now I've got to cut it off. I've got to shape it and form it. I'm going to do that, and I'll put it on high-speed play so that you won't have to, like, watch it, you know, dwell on and on and on. But you'll at least get a gist of how I do it using certain instruments to perform the task. 
I'm going to put my vacuum on. I'm going to pull this little rascal out. That's my little suction port. I'm going to position myself so you can see what I'm doing best as possible. And then I'm going to grind like hell. So, stand by.
a butt joint because when the when I put the tray material over top of it, I want to create a rim lock. But with that being said, I also have to place tissue stops. I'm going to put one here, like I always do, right on the top of the tuberosities. And then I'm going to put one right here, away from anything that looks flabby and movable. And if you recall, one of the reasons that we're, we're sending the tray is because there was a compression on the papilla there. The tray spacer should take up that and so it shouldn't smear. But I will also in this area, I will probably relieve it a little bit more in the tray. But I pretty much have the correct extensions on the spacer. It's roughly about an eighth or so inch from the floor of the vestibular area, which will give you enough room for it to border mold when the impression and registration is taken at the same time. So I'll go ahead and drill these out. Might take two seconds. Probably could use this, maybe. Whenever you're making these tissue stops, just remember to not leave anything on the bottom side that might hold the spacer up off the model. That's one of the things I was doing while I was grinding. Like I was making sure I didn't create anything like that. And again, slower speeds always work best. Um, you find that speed where the material just curls, just melts a little bit but doesn't like super smoke or anything like that because it's one thing you don't want is you don't want them smoking all over the place because then what you'll do is you'll distort you'll distort the spacer okay so tissue stop there you notice i always make the rounded tissue stops you can refer to my trays three ways video or article but basically i make them round so there's no corners that can gouge into tissue which will leave like a little corner compression. This uh, avoids that corner compression by making the circular rather than making them circular rather than square. Square is the way that I was taught in school but circular is the way that really works in real life. You also know the reason why we put the spacers in I hope is because we want these areas to touch first, which will then maintain that amount of space, which is provided by the spacer. If it didn't, it would bottom out, and um, you would get um, burn through or compression areas. So we want to avoid those by putting in tissue stops. And again, I put mine here because this has got a pronounced papilla. And we don't want to have that papillary compression because underneath that papilla is a foramen. A foramen is a hole in the bone where innervation and vascularity come through. And if you have a compression in that area, there's a good chance that the patient will experience numbness wearing their denture and uncomfortable. It will be uncomfortable to wear because it's compressing um, what's underneath the papilla, which is, like I say, innervation and, and blood flow through that area. So in order to prevent that, I try to put a tripoded uh, tissue stop location, which is on the hard pallet so that there's a positive stop. Okay, I'll be back.